G'day. Sweet potato. Dingo, drongo, numbo, bongo, emus, wombat, bush rat, frail cat, ocker, shocker, blow wave rocker, come out of your locker. Ears rock, ice block, gold tops, creeks freeze, kookaburby, cockatoo, true blue, kakadoo, did you redo? Good news, no shoes, sheilas, feelers, nose appealers, dope dealers, narc, sharks, stringy bucks, cobbers, robbers, redback, redneck, funnel web spider. Dag, swagger, leeches, beaches, sun-dried peaches, butternut, beer, gut, gala, Holden car, milk, bar, road, train, fire ban, possum, smoothie, surfies, down to earthies, mud brick, mud crab, give a dog a bone, hippies, koalas, punks and poofters, stongs, billabongs and bludgers. Snow gum, burnt bum, meat pie. Stay high. Raw prawns, pommies, orange dawns, twoies, octopus, platypus, bindi, sunnies, dunnies, lagers, stubbies, goanna, bloody lantana. Marsupial mouse, opera house, blowfly, gunda guy, bye bye, brown snake, black stump, back of burk, at back, up front, down under, gelato, technicolor, chunder. Dusty scrub, witchetty grub, zinc cream, oz dream, vegemar, shiba right, out of sight, boomerang, bring you back to start again, ocker. Bun yips, land right, southern nights, midnight oil on the boil. You'll come a while, say Matilda with me. It's about walkabout. It's about walkabout. It's about walkabout. It's about walkabout. It's about bloody time, mate. If I am that I am, if I is what I is, that I am, I am, therefore, I must be, you see, I think. But, am I flesh or mind? Unzip me skin, what do you find? Am I senses, taste, smell, ears, eyes, touch as well? Am I anything at all, good, bad, answers, questions, happy? sad and when i crumble back to clay do i go do i stay what about judgment criticism too i don't like him but i do like you am i this idea that i have of me a bird in a cage singing to be so am i skin black white am i darkness Am I light? Was I just then or here and now? Hindus, Sufi, Zen or Tao? What about the elements? Earth and air, in water and fire, do you find me there? Am I personality or never changing reality? Tangled up in space and time, turning reason back to rhyme. So am I ego? There you go, a bubble that you see. Or am I? The ancient future moment, eternally. To be quite honest, I don't really know. There once was a man, Sam Satyam, who smoked and smoked some more. And the bigger the bong, the more Sam smoked on, the more he went out to score. I'm high like a llama, I've got no more karma, well that's the way I feel, and now that I'm free, it's all up to me, I've got no worries anymore. With his chakras a spin, he kept on talking, though it seemed just a little unreal, to be as high as a kite zonked on his insight, while his pineal wriggled like an eel. He went into spasm, a herbal orgasm with THC on the brain. His friend said, you've lost it, man, but they were accosted, and he was seriously derailed. Confused, isolated, in the world he'd created, disconnected, in a void. He was losing his heart, and was in part deluded and quite paranoid. His kundalini prolapsed. He fused all his synapse, his bundas popped out of his ears. That sorry stone soul was lost down the bong bowl and had forgotten simple goodwill and cheer. Along came a guru 
from Uluru, fly by Mama Dakini Cheese. Just passing by neath that dreamtime sky, collecting honey from the hives of wild bees. The yogini was wise, on her no flies, and she spoke as the sages relate. Reclaim your passion, give up your talking, you are no fucking fakir yet. Her words were like balm, and a deep kind of calm came over Sam's aura that day. The cat got his tongue and struck him quite dumb, numb as a mouthful of old dry pupperdum. Then his liver smiled, the deep inner smile, and fixed up his hemorrhoids and boils. His acne condition went into remission, and his kidneys shouted for joy. To be quite blunt, I admit I've been a real twit, and that my bhakti was all Bhakti front. Dakini cheese became his tantric squeeze, and together they work on their stuff. Well, Sam now lives with the holy cheese in an ashram just outside of Byron Bay. And onward they rage toward the old golden age, though some may call it Judgment Day. Whatever gets you through the night. Once a jolly hippie camped with his mull and bone Under the shade of a coolie bar tree And he sang as he choked and waited for his brain to boil You'll come a waltzing to Mullum with me Waltzing to Mullum, waltzing to Mullum You'll come a waltzing to Mullum, Bimby And he sang as he choked and waited for his brain to boil You'll come a waltzing to Mullum with me up jumped a feral pusslet and dreadlocks Playing on a djembe tribally I need a stash man to take to the confest Down on the banks of the old Murray Waltzing to Mullum, waltzing to Mullum You'll come a waltzing to Mullum, Bimby And he sang as he stoked and waited for his brain to boil You'll come a waltzing to Mullum with me. Along came a copper from the local drug squad, called for reinforcements on his CB. Where's that ounce of ganja you've got in your tucker bag? You'll come a waltzing to Mullum with me. Waltzing to Mullum, waltzing to Mullum. You'll come a waltzing to Mullum Bimby. And he sang as he choked and waited for his brain to boil. You'll come a waltzing to Mullum with me. Off ran the hippie, traumatised and freaked out, guzzling down a bottle of rescue remedy. Straight into a workshop where he was processed and after birth. Ooh, yeah. You'll come a waltzing to Mullum with me. Waltzing to Mullum, waltzing to Mullum. You'll come a waltzing to Mullum, Bimby. And he sang as he choked and waited for his brain to boil. You'll come a waltzing to Mullum with me. Sadly, he died. One fine day in Byron Bay Overdosed on latte and short black coffee And his ghost made be heard Late night at the doof, 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 Techno rage You'll come a waltzing to Mullum with me Now once upon a pineapple sage, Rosemary and Time, there was a fellow called Basil. His real name was Ossium Basilium Verigatum, but that was a bit of a mouthful, so everyone called him Basil. Basil lived along Penny Royal Way. He'd often stay up late at night reading old perennial laurel and hardy annuals or Hisop's fables. 
making Japanese oregano cranes, listening to the Red Hot Chili Peppers, or the artist formerly known as Quince. Many people took him for a fennel Greek, but he was of Jewish extraction, his father being a coal rabbi at the local amenagogue. One day, Basil put on his daikons, pulled up his turnips, and climbed down Jacob's ladder for a bowl of borage to warm his periwinkles and cockleburs. But Marigold the cow had given Basil the cowslip. Oh, grape, just vine, he griped, and usually she's such a slow, Horace. When I read her the more, she's off through the garden sedge. No milk thristle for my borage. What the echinacea will I do? She's ducked off somewhere into the quack grass and mandrake. Marigold, marigold, he chirped, feeling a bit of a mugwort. Maybe it was something I said or did. If so, I'm sorrel, my bovine angelica, ox eye, and cow parsley. Hickory dickory dock, Marigold was out on the wild hop as fast as she could clop, eye bright and slippery as an elm. Basil grabbed his shepherd's purse and bow and yarrow to protect against wolf's bane and ran down the blue wood in hop pursuit but found neither hair nor whisker of her. He scotch pined for marigold, searched the wormwood high and low, the strawberry patch, the stag bush, and even the scurvy grass. He asked the bees and the bee chives and pods of senna if they'd seen her. He walked on for chamomiles and chamomiles. Oh, if she were here now, I'd treat her with... Kid foxgloves, he moaned. Aconite fell very quickly that afternoon, and soon he was chilled to the pumpkin and marrow. With his bladder racked and bursting to go to the lavender, his mistletoes blistered and a pimpernel growing on the end of his nose, his only comfrey was a mouthful of marshmallows, and his pipe, which he filled with Irish moss, porkweed and sassafras, to help keep the bog beans at bay. Suddenly, sarsaparilla splashed on the cinnamon screen of his mind, and a vision appeared. It was that of a fair primrose-breasted damson with long lady's fingers and ginger stem hair. She introduced herself as Lily of the Valley, and Basil fell immediately under her smell. Uttering words of romantic rapture, such as Oh, my passion fruit, silky maiden hair, Wee poppy of delights, lovage of me life, Honeysuckle rose, sweetest flower, East and west of the Suez, Apple of me eye, fish supper, And chip butty of me dreams, And other things that young chaps say at these times. Kiss me, my red cabbage, she whispered, and so he did, right on her pert red sage lips. Then, quick as the Tasmanian weather, the luscious dolly parsley changed into a prickly old holly, an ugly hogweed indeed, riding a yellow broom through the briar, muttering, rhubarb, rhubarb, rhubarb. And stinking Irish scabwort is my name. She croaked with a voice like garlic and a face like an omaboshi plum. Belladonna, yelped Basil, and wished he could pull the deadly nightshades over his eyes and make it all go away fast as Colt's foot. But there she was, grim as hellebore and fleas being, hairy as henbane and nasty as nux vomica. Ah, you pay for your wild oats, if you're an English oak or John of Groats. And this is my other face. Would you love me too? Prickly as hawthorn, bitter as rue. I'll test your metal and become a stingy nettle. And if that's not your cup of two-in-one Paraguayan tea, you can go your own way. <laughs> Truth bumbled Basil, but somehow composed himself and gave this reply. 
In my youth, my lady, I couldn't give a fig. Just a little rooting hormone and I'd become a sprig. Many times I've blown it, many times I've blooped, but I've changed my bay leaves now in life's bowl of herb soup. So call me a soursop, call me a cherry, but to me you are a dewy punnet of fresh organic blueberries. Well, the lady loved this, and she gave her golden seal of approval. She said, your culinary canny with both herbs and spice to garnish spuds and basmati rice will serve you well. You are no tansy pansy or sour lemon, but a smart weed indeed, and on the road to heaven. Now Lily really was quite some dish, bestowing upon him her flavours, which was quite enough. And so this rambling, brambling tale comes to an end. An alcoholic axolotl curled out his pond, took to the bottle, went on a bender and drank a lotl, his knees to bent, his teeth did rattle. The alcoholic axolotl with luminous pink gills, eyes that boggle, milk-white skin and bright green spittle, got so pissed he couldn't give a shittle. The alcoholic axolotl demanded just another wee tipple, wobbled, swayed and almost toppled, hissed, spat and did a flipple, screaming that snatched me away from my mother's warm nipple. The alcoholic axolotl cursed and hurled a beautiful throttle, spun and lurched like some space shuttle, till all his chums had had a guttle full, so miffed they were at all his crapple. The alcoholic axolotl repeated this pattern once too often. There hurts and things not easily forgotten, just so much to which hearts can soften. Folks close down when they are open, start to frown when trust is broken, resentments made, judgments taken. The alcoholic axolotl soon left that place. He felt shaken, his spleen at Twitched, his brain was aching. He returned to his pond with remorse and reflection, crying, All I wanted was some affection. He dreamed that night in bright blue bubbles about all his fears and all his troubles. Nightmarish creatures writhed before him. Friends turned their backs. They ignored him. But you don't know me, wailed Axolotl. That's just the me that lurks in a bottle. I know it seems I'm really queer, but underneath it all, I'm quite sincere. I want to be honest. I want to be real. I want to express what I really feel. The alcoholic axolotl awoke next morning. He felt awful. But what's more, he was in for a shockle when the boys in blue at the door did knockle. <coughs> Good morning, sir said Sergeant Corkle. Are you Mr. Axolotl? We've had complaints all down the street all that you scare the poo out of some good people. It's all very well that you act so venal, but I warn you of repercussions penal. What to speak of your adrenals? Axolotl was feeling suckle. But no one ever stays in a pickle, cause life will change, it sure is fickle. You could walk tall or be belittled, but don't freak out, go on, giggle, cause you're the judge and you're acquittal. If you're confused or in a muddle, all washed out, down in the puddle, don't despair or blow your bubble, there's always a way out of your trouble. Axolotl changed on the spot. There was something he really got. His life flashed past before his eyes. Yes, of course, we all carry some disguise. If it's all an illusion, give me truth, nay lies. Cause in my heart, I know I'm wise. He laughed and laughed, shone like an opal, when he realized he was Wetzelcoatl.
Long ago and far away on the islands of Japan, there lived a hermit monk whose name was Ryokan. Ryokan lived in a rickety shack with rice paper walls and floors of tatami. A rickety garden gate, too, made of bamboo, but with no fence to it, and a small snail as a lock shitting on it. Ryokan lived a simple life, fetching wood, chopping water, and eating one meal of rice a day. His only possession was a round wooden bowl, worn smooth with use and age. His favorite pastime was calligraphy and poetry, which he scrawled in a style much as if a spider had wandered drunkenly on sake over a paper. And put it up, especially where the cracks let the drafts in. One fine spring night, Ryokan went wandering through the tall bamboo forest. All a while, the moon shone like a lantern full of fireflies, and the bamboo swayed as gracefully as the emperor's daughter herself. Hasso, how beautiful is the moon, he whispered. Her face as white as fresh organic tofu. In that moment, a flock of geese threw silhouette across the face of the moon. Ah, so my mind is moving. And so he sat silently in meditation for a while. After a while, he pulled his robe over his shoulder and walked his way slowly homeward. On arriving back, it was plain to see that someone had been there in his absence. They hadn't taken their shoes off, and there were muddy footprint all over the tatami mats. Hasso, a guest, said Ryokan. Oh, what a shame! I was not here to greet them. And then he noticed that his wooden bowl had been stolen. A soul, a thief! Oh, but he must have been hungry. What a shame! I was not here to feed them. To come all this way and leave empty hands and empty belly, but for that old. How I wish I could have given them the gift of such a beautiful moon outside my window. Sitting quietly, doing nothing, spring comes and the grass grows by itself. I've tried re-earthing through rebirthing, radical Russian rolfing, and bioenergetic Mayan beam surfing. Sat in meditation, listened to subliminal affirmations, had three colonic irrigations, practiced pranayama, and even met the Dalai Lama. I've used an alpha brain tuner, sweated in lodges, hung out in teepees and yurts, consult oracles, runes, the tarot, the ching, and I'm rereading the return of the Merlin. I've experienced past lives, future shock, became vegetarian, fruitarian, breatharian, macroneurotic, and I stir-fry my tofu in a stainless steel wok. I've studied astrology, numerology, Celtic mythology, neo-pagan reflexology. I'm into channeling Pleiadians, Syrians, repeating my mantra. I've dabbled in Tantra, fractals, crystals, Sufi spirals, and colored in my Yantra. Yes, folks. I've raised my kundalini, hung out with the greenies, proudly knitted a rainbow beanie, and grown my very own organic zucchinis. I've learned how to circular breathe through my ears and nose, watch the skies for UFOs, and once had dreadlocks right down to the tips of my toes. 
With the aid of mushrooms and exotic herbs, the music of the seven spheres I've heard. I've journeyed through inner space, via outer space, right off my face, and come back again to the human race. I fastened my photon belt, stood in the gateway of the eleven eleven, the twelve twelve, the thirteen twenty. I know I'm one of the hundred and forty four thousand, the bird tribe, the star seed guaranteed. I commune with nature, make friends with the elves, and ponder the mystery of our inner selves. I sleep deep on a futon. Transmute into photon and drink herbal tea with my angel from Lemurion. I've set adrift into whale and dolphin dreaming, but always I seem to surface with the bends screaming. For you see, after all these things, my lovers and friends again and again, my sisters and brothers, do you know what? I still hate my mother. Water, water, you remember it all. A real shapeshifter with total recall. They say that the same water's been here since the first day, since the world was born, since the dawn of time, since hydrogen and oxygen first said, Get I. Do see do, grab your partners, and off we go. Water, water, heaven's daughter. Inspiring, irrigating, vaporizing, transpiring, evaporating, intoxicating, refreshing, thirst quenching, life giving water. Liquid for squid and fish and chips and galleons and ships with billowing sail. Water, water, you trickle, gurgle, gush and splash. But water is the wrong stuff. Don't let it get by your lips. It warps your socks, it rots your boots, puts aches in all your bones. Dilute the stuff with whiskey, aye, or leave it well alone. A childhood of rhubarb, bracken, brambles, and rowan, of brecon beacons flecked white with bleating sheep, of silent burrowing moles and spiders' holes and the cold stone wall where I would sit, of black cats and stovepipe hats, red Welsh dragons and gypsy wagons, of wild Welsh ponies and sour gooseberries, of newts, adders, and slippery slow worm Sundays, of Grandpa Morgan's weather vane nose and dock fresh cod in the sink, of cockles and cobblestones and lava bread of heaven, when I was just seven. <laughs>